Hello there, I'm Professor Feltman. So, you want to know about the TARDIS? Well, have you ever found yourself pondering on the workings of the time and relative dimension in space, commonly known as the TARDIS, the iconic time machine and spacecraft from the British science fiction television series Doctor Who? Originating from the advanced civilization of the Time Lords on the planet Gallifrey, the TARDIS is a staple of the science fiction genre, its most striking feature. It's larger on the inside than the outside. A regular looking blue British police box on the outside, it opens up to reveal an expansive and complex interior, defying our understanding of physics and space. This unique characteristic sparks curiosity and wonder, making the TARDIS an enduring symbol of the limitless possibilities of science fiction. Now, let's delve into the secrets of this mysterious machine. How does the TARDIS manage to be bigger on the inside? The answer lies in the fourth dimension. A tesseract, or a hypercube, offers a glimpse into this enigmatic dimension. This is not your everyday run-of-the-mill cube. A tesseract is a cube viewed from the perspective of the fourth dimension, allowing it to hold more space than its three-dimensional counterpart. Now, when we think of the TARDIS, we might consider it a three-dimensional object, a box. But when we step inside, we encounter an entirely different reality. This look, it's bigger on the inside! This is where the magic happens. The TARDIS, much like a tesseract, allows for more space to exist within its confines than the exterior suggests. It's not just a box. It's a space-time vehicle, a pocket universe, if you will, that can encompass an entire world within itself. So how does this work? Well, the fourth dimension, often associated with time, is actually a spatial dimension. It's another direction in which to travel. To put it simply, the TARDIS is not constrained by the typical three dimensions we're familiar with. It's a four-dimensional space, allowing it to be larger on the inside than it appears from the outside. And so we come to understand that the TARDIS is not just a simple box. It's a marvel of four-dimensional engineering, a testament to the ingenuity of the Time Lords of Gallifrey. In simple terms, the TARDIS is a four-dimensional space, allowing it to be larger on the inside than it appears from the outside. The TARDIS isn't just about spatial manipulation, it's also a time-travelling machine. But how does it work exactly? The secret lies in the concept known as the Time Vortex, a term that sounds like it's straight out of a science fiction novel. The Time Vortex is an infinite series of wormholes. These wormholes span all of time and space, creating a vast network that connects every moment and every place in the universe. Imagine it like an intricate web, spun by the universe itself, linking the past, present and future in an endless cosmic dance. Here's where the TARDIS comes in. The Time Lords of Gallifrey, the creators of the TARDIS, figured out a way to navigate this complex web. They built their time machines to travel through the vortex, slipping from one wormhole to another, moving back and forth in time, and jumping from one place in space to another. It's a concept that might seem bewildering, but it's what makes the TARDIS a true marvel of science fiction. TARDISes are grown from a little baby TARDIS to a big mummy TARDIS. They're a sort of sentient being ship with emotions and a personality. Are you laughing? You are, aren't you? What's so funny? TARDISes can change their appearance. Unfortunately, the Doctor's TARDIS is stuck as a police box since 1963 when its chameleon circuitry was broken. In order to travel through space and time, the TARDIS needs an exceptional amount of power and energy. And what more bountiful source of both can there be than that generated by a star? Yes, the TARDIS is powered by a dying star in the process of decaying into a black hole known as the Eye of Harmony. Using Time Lord knowledge, this cataclysmic event is suspended in time while the TARDIS utilizes this energy as a power source. Well, I never. So originally, the TARDIS could be anything it wants, blending in with its surroundings. Um, I think we'll leave it as a boiled police box. 
Next time you see the TARDIS, remember it's not just a blue box, it's an icon of limitless possibilities. Hello there, I'm Professor Feldman. So you want to know about the Daleks? Why did the Dalek apply for a job in pest control? Because it loves to exterminate? Welcome folks to a delightful dive into the world of Daleks. Born from the creative mind of Terry Nation, these odd-looking creatures have been causing a stir in the universe of Doctor Who since 1963. Don't let their pepper pot appearance fool you though. These beings from the planet Scaro are far from kitchen utensils. They are a force to be reckoned with. Their design, though peculiar, is a marvel of alien technology, featuring a multitude of deadly weapons and a single-minded drive for domination. And their iconic catchphrase, exterminate, a single word that echoes their chilling intent, sending shivers down the spine of anyone who hears it. Well, let's dive into their design. Okay, so we're going to dissect a Dalek. We'll start at the top section. The eye stalk, the part of the Dalek which enables the Dalek mutant to receive visual input from outside its casing. This is the most vulnerable part of the Dalek, and it's not in 4K. The directional audio receptor, located just behind the eye lens, this receptor enables a Dalek to detect which direction a sound is coming from. Over here! No, over here! A mutated brain. A Dalek's more complex functions are controlled by a mutated organic brain allowing Daleks to get all your bank details and rob you of all your money via the ATM. The telescopic arm usually deployed to manipulate controls. The plunge on the end of this arm could also be used to suffocate or Would crush enemies. Sucker me to death. The gun stick. The Dalek's gun stick is reminiscent of today's laser-directed energy weapons, which produce a beam of concentrated electromagnetic energy, or atomic slash subatomic particles. And next, the bottom half. The Kalid Mutant. Yes, these octopus-like aliens originated from the planet Scaro. Normally reliant on their armored exterior for protection, you'll find that they're almost as deadly without it. Doctor, are you all right? <laughs> sensors. Much like the sensors in any modern-day car, a Dalek has a collection of globular sensors on its exterior to monitor its surroundings and detect temperature changes and movement proximity. In later iterations of the Dalek, these globular sensors would actually act as a force field and would contain ballistic missiles. Mobility. The early Daleks had to travel around on a metal floor, receiving power from solar panels above their city, very similar to the dodging car at the fair. This meant that if they first wanted to conquer the universe, they would firstly have to conquer stairs. And so the Daleks were equipped with anti-gravity discs in order to levitate off the ground for hover mode. 
Oh, and then they had flying. Exterminate all life forms below! Exterminate! Hang on. We have just managed to intercept a broadcast from the Dalek mothership. Let's eavesdrop. Boo-hoo! What is the matter? I have blocked the toilet. I will sort it. How? What do you think the plunger is for? Again, it's me, Professor Feltman. So we're into part two of the Daleks. Over to Dr. David Attenberger. The Daleks. Collectively, they are the greatest enemies of Doctor Who's protagonist, the Time Lord known as the Doctor. The 16 incarnations of the Time Lord, 15 if you don't count one twice, have had their fair share of alien baddies to deal with, but nothing compares to the ruthless evil Daleks. As you can see, they had a penchant for killing. Even in black and white, they were still a force to be reckoned with. Power Sources The power source of the Dalek casing changed several times. During the Doctor's first encounter with them on Skaro, he learned that the casing was externally powered by static electricity transmitted through the metal floors of the Dalek city. Isolating a Dalek from the floor using a non-conductive material shut down the casing. The Daleks initially overcame this weakness by adding dishes to their casing to receive power. Although even these were ultimately replaced by vertical, rectangular slats around the midsection, which absorbed other sources of power. By the beginning of the last Great Time War, the Daleks had adapted their technology to use a type of energy apparently linked to the process of time travel. On more than one occasion, Daleks and their devices were seen to leech this energy from time travelers in order to power themselves. Davros! Ooh! That man should seriously consider moisturizing. Davros is the mastermind and the creator of the Daleks, who has mastered many areas of science, but also a megalomaniac who believes that through his creation he can become the supreme being and the ruler of the universe. But it's the ultimate case of, oops, I created a species that won't stop exterminating. His resume reads, tried to end a war, accidentally wiped out two civilizations, survived, then spent eons trying to manage a bunch of tin cans that had a serious case of rebelliousness. Exterminate! Anyway, he won't be needing this. Drawing inspiration from the Nazis, Nation portrayed the Daleks as xenophobic, violent, merciless and pitiless cyborg aliens completely absent of any emotion other than hate, who demand total conformity to the will of the Dalek with the highest authority and are bent on the conquest of the universe and the extermination of any other forms of life, including other impure Daleks, which are deemed inferior for being different to them. You have seen the inner workings of the Daleks and the beast inside. You may ask yourself, is it all down to what drives a high-powered machine? That defines it. Time for an experiment over to Feltman in the lab. Okay, we have ascertained that the alien operating this high-powered killing machine is a grumpy being with a bad attitude. That begs the question, what would happen if we swapped out the alien for something less aggressive? Let's find out. Out with the Khaled Mutant. 
and in with the fluffy bunny. Hello, little bunny rabbit. Carrots, I want carrots. Give me carrots. Carrots! In the end, the Daleks are a fascinating paradox. They're these peculiar pepper pot shaped creatures, armed to the teeth with apocalyptic capabilities, yet they're as comical as a rubber duck in a three piece suit. It's this delightful contradiction that makes them so captivating. They're simultaneously terrifying and amusing, much like a clown at a horror film festival. And remember, if a Dalek ever asks you for a hug, just say no. They're not being friendly, they just can't reach their back to scratch an itch. Subscribe!